Example one here, guys, and the Chinese remainder theorem. So you're here probably because you're studying number theory, discrete, or you do contest math. Whatever the reason, I hope this video is helpful. All right, now, um, the Chinese remainder theorem helps us solve a system of simultaneous congruences in two or more equations. And the solution, x, is described here at the bottom. And the only things I did not define here in this box are these guys, right? And then the y's. So let's define them now. So capital M sub k is equal to, notice I've defined a capital M without a subscript right there. So capital M sub k is equal to capital M divided by little m sub k. So then we're saying capital M sub 1 is equal to capital M divided by little m sub 1. So that's to say, if you want to find capital M sub 1, then leave out this guy and multiply all of the other little m's, m2 through m sub r, all the little m's. Yeah? Okay, cool. But what I've done here should suffice. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, cool. So then we need to talk about the y's and then we can see the actual example. So y1 here is the inverse of capital M sub 1 mod little m sub 1. So then y2 here is the inverse of capital M sub 2 mod little m sub 2 and so on. You get it? Okay, cool, cool, cool. If you don't get it, you'll get it when I do the example. All right, I have an example too where we do a system of four like I might have already said, uh, in this example, we're only going to do a system of two equations. Okay, cool. So here is the first equation. I don't want this um, like uh, example to be trivial, so I started with a 2x instead of just an x, so fancy, right? Okay, cool. So the first equation says 2x is congruent to, and it is 2x is congruent to 5 mod 7, and then... Uh, the second equation will say 3x is congruent to 3x is congruent to 4 mod 8. Okay. So um, first, we need both equations to have just an x on the left side. So how do we do that? Well, in this equation, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of 2 mod 7, and that is 4. 4 is the inverse of 2 mod 7 because 4 times 2 is 8 and that's 1 mod 7. So upon multiplying by 4 on both sides, we can write that uh, the first equation is the same as x is congruent to 20 mod 7. And the second equation we can write is x is congruent to um, 12 mod 8. Clearly, I'm suggesting that the inverse of 3 is 3 mod 8, right? Mod 8, the inverse of 3 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, and that's the same as 1 mod 8, right? Okay, cool, 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 cool. And now, we can reduce both of these equations um, by their respective mod, right? So this first one can reduce to um, x is congruent to 6 mod 7, um, and then... The second one can reduce to x is congruent to, and that's an x, is congruent to 4 mod 8. And that's because 20 acts like uh, the number 6 mod 7, and then um, 12 acts like the number 4 uh, mod 8. They're in the same congruence class, 12 and 4, and then 20 and 6. Yeah? Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Now, uh, from here, we can apply the Chinese remainder theorem. So first, let's find capital M. Capital M is the product of, in this case, little m1 and m2, and that is 7 times 8. So that's 56, right? Okay, cool. And so then, um, we're going to say that capital M sub 1 is going to be capital M divided by uh, little m sub 1, so that's 56 divided by... Um, 7, so that's 8. You didn't have to do all that, right? I said, like, leave this out, multiply the others. There's only this now, so yeah. Um, and, and so we could do m sub 2, capital M sub 2 quicker, and we know it's 7, right? Okay, cool. And now, um, before we get to x, we just need to find y1 and y2, and y1 uh, and y2, right? 
and remember y1 is the inverse of um, capital M sub 1 uh, mod 7 so what's that right um, okay so 8 times um, what gives us um, 1 mod 7 1 right so y1 is 1 because 1 times 8 is 8 but it's 1 mod 7 right okay cool 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 all right uh, and then y2 is the inverse of um, capital M sub 2 mod 8 this time right and so what times 7 uh, gives us a remainder of 1 mod 8 well 7 because 7 times 7 is 49 and when we divide 49 by 8 it leaves a remainder of 1 so y2 is 7 here so then we're ready to get um, our solution x here we've got all the pieces so x our solution is going to equal a1 6 um, times uh, and then capital M sub 1 8 times and then y1 um, and y1 is 1 this time okay plus and then a2 right um, and a2 this time is 4 so 4 times capital M sub 2 so 7 times y2 so 7 so this says um, 48 uh, plus um, 196 which is 244 okay while 244 is a solution we need to look at 244 mod capital M so then we need to reduce 244 mod uh, 56 so 244 mod 56 is equal to 20 so our solution X the unique solution X is 20 and I say unique solution because clearly 244 is also a solution. But 20 and 244 are in the same congruence class mod 56. So the unique solution is 20. Now you could have probably like just eyeballed it, which is like before we did all this, you could have been like, uh, what number x leaves a remainder of 6 when divided by 7, but also leaves a remainder of 4 when divided by 8? Surely that's 20. 20 divided by 7. Uh, leaves a remainder of 6 and 20 divided by 8 leaves a remainder of 4 but clearly it gets harder when you have more than two equations right and that's where the Chinese remainder theorem comes in okay I hope you enjoyed this and um, definitely one more example possibly two so keep an eye out for those keep watching